this process will help us to start the, 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 the very difficult process of proper reconciliation, restitution, bringing together of everyone that must have, in one form or the other, been affected by either the police or any of our citizens that must have been wronged by one form or the other. Welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa as we focus on the answers report from Lagos State and what's next. You know, we have joining us Agbenga Komalafe. He is the co convener coalition for revolution. Good morning to you, Mr. Komalafe. Many thanks for joining us on the breakfast this morning. Good morning. All right, uh, let's indeed uh, examine uh, the NSAS report uh, from Lagos and of course uh, what's next. Uh, we understand that you addressed um, a press um, conference um, yesterday and indeed you made some uh, certain demands and uh, in as much as Nigerians are awaiting the white paper to be released by the Lagos State Governor Babajide Somolu, you actually uh, made some demands. Can you just run, uh, run us through them? Thank you very much. Um, what we did actually was to reaffirm the recommendations of the ENSAS panel, uh, which was set up by the Labour State Government uh, to probe, among other things, into what actually happened at the Lekito Gate on the night of uh, October 20, uh, year 2020. Um, so we deem it fit to reaffirm the recommendations of the panel in view of the a vicious attack that uh, the report of the panel has been subjected to uh, by spokespersons and apologists of uh, the state government. Um, and it will be recalled that the panel actually was set up by the state government. The panel members were unpicked by the state government and uh, uh, comprised of uh, men and women of uh, uh, impeccable character. We have a retired judge, we have uh, um, eminent uh, um, legal practitioners. Uh, we have a retired deputy inspector general of police, and so on and so forth. So, um, one will least expect that I will come into an animus uh, position. Uh, one will least expect that uh, anybody, least of all spokespersons of the state government, will come out. Uh, to come out to disparage the recommendations of the panel just because they feel that uh, the panel funds its conscience, members of the panel fund their conscience and affirmed the facts as was revealed to them by the testimonies of those who came uh, before the panel to testify under oath about what actually happened that night. Among other things, the panel recommended, uh, the, panel, the panel affirmed that the army had no business being uh, in the target on the 9th of October 20, uh, because the protests had been peaceful. Um, all that came, up, came out to testify about the protests are found to the fact that it was extremely peaceful, uh, very well organized. Um, protest members made sure the, uh, the protest ground was always clean. They made sure they protected themselves against attacks of talks that were often unleashed on them. Um, they were arrested some of these talks and they handed them over to the police. Um, and uh, according to the testimony of General Taiwo, who also testified on that road, uh, the protesters even uh, uh, fraternized with members of the security uh, forces deployed there. Uh, they shared drinks, according to him, and so on and so forth. All right, so Mr. Given the, given the peaceful atmosphere, the panel found that there was no 
reason for the army to be there in the first instance. All right, Mr. Kumala, if, if I have to butt in at this particular instance, uh, in as much as uh, we have uh, seen uh, the leaked report, or allegedly uh, leaked report, which was unsigned, what value can we really place on that report, in as much as there were recommendations from this leaked uh, you know, report, and the Lagos State Government is yet to release a white paper? Should we place so much value on that report? Well, uh, the truth of the matter is that nobody has actually come out to say the panel report was false or that the recommendation contained there are uh, invalid. Neither the, neither the panel members, who are still very much around, nor even the uh, spokespersons of the state government have come out to say that uh, what has been released was in the public domain right now is false. Rather, they have been attacking the content of uh, the panel report. So, which means that uh, uh, the content is not what's in contention. I mean, sorry, the report itself is not what's in contention, but rather they are quarreling with uh, the far-reaching conclusions and recommendations of the panel. So, I don't think there's any, nobody has come out to say, oh, that panel, uh, well, that's not our report. Uh, no, no, the panel has not come out to say, oh, that uh, what is circulating is not what has been submitted. Uh, uh, even the lawyer to the state government has not come out to say that all the copy circulating is not what is in their possession. Rather, he came out to um, attack the contents of the report. He came out to attack the persons of the panel members. He, he made very wide allegations against the panel members, uh, even going as far as alleging that they collected bribes. You know, so definitely, um, what we have now is not in contention by anybody. So we have we have no reason to doubt that uh, what we have in the public domain now uh, represents the uh, main elements of uh, the answers panel reports. Well, and that's how it should be, because the report belongs to the public. It's not the private document of anybody or even the state government. But yeah. uh, you, you would also, um, and I would also want to ask, shouldn't we be concerned about the fact that the report is not signed? I mean, it has no signature on it. Shouldn't that be a concern? Well, um, uh, from every indication, what we have had in the public domain actually was left out, uh, possibly to ensure that the content will be protected. Uh, we all agree that what we have in public domain is not official yet. Uh, we all await the government white paper uh, on the report. Uh, what the government white paper does is not to rewrite the report. Is just to express the opinion of the government on the report and to state what they will do or will not do about it. So we await the white paper, but um, signed or unsigned, what is very clear is that nobody has come out to deny that that report represents the main elements of what has been submitted as the outcome of the answers panel. Uh, nobody has come out to to dispute that. Rather, we have several attempts to discredit it. Uh, and those are, those so, are so different I, I, that's a different matter entirely. So I'd like to ask, uh, what happens if, uh, you know, the leaked report, I mean, and the white paper, because we're counting down eight days before we get the white paper, uh, what happens if there's no correlation between the leaked report and the white paper? Well, uh, I've said it before, the panel members are alive. As a matter of, the, uh, as a matter of fact, um, Barista Ebun Adeburua, who has been particularly single, was particularly singled out by uh, Barista Oni uh for attack in his response to the circulating report. Has come out to say that, uh, uh, I mean, the, the report is in the possession of every panel member. And that uh, it will not hesitate to make everything, not just the report, but even the uh, proceedings, the text of the proceedings, day by day, throughout the one year, it will make it available. 
uh, to the public. So, uh, so the panel members are alive. If uh, the government now refuses to make available the reports, then uh, of course we we'll, uh, have a reason to call the panel members to avail us uh, the official content of the reports. And we also have every reason as citizens of this country to call on the Labour state government to come out officially with uh, uh, the report. If they say the one circulating is unsigned, then let them come out with the one that is signed. And uh, let's have the so-called white paper. And uh, then we will know how to respond. All right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Uh, Adigburu. But yet again, in the wake of um, all of uh, this, uh, the white paper yet to be released, uh, we are seeing... Uh, lots of uh, threats and of course uh, people or star witness being macheted you know what does this really tell the white paper is yet to be released and um, the the senior lawyer there at Dick Barua is saying that uh, if anything happens uh, to him the Lagos state government uh, should be held responsible so what do we expect to see in the uh, next coming days if uh, the senior lawyer is actually claiming that uh, he's been threatened and the star witness is being macheted yeah, um, we we'll, uh, uh, expect the white paper to reflect largely what um, negotiations and the Nigerian public has been subjected to since the report has been circulating. Uh, they have tried everything to discredit the report, and they have tried everything to even cast as passions on the persons of the panel members. So we expect that the so-called white paper will uh, follow in that vein. Uh, like somebody commented, uh, Barrister Awoni Koko has actually given us the content of the white paper uh, by his uh, wide-reaching allegations and attacks on the report. So um, it will be a pleasant surprise if the white paper affirms the logical, reasonable conclusions of the report, uh, which flows directly from the testimony standard before the panel. Uh, it will be a pleasant surprise, but it will not be uh, it will not be shocking. It will not be a surprise at all to anybody if it's otherwise. Uh, if the white paper comes out to disparage the report or to try to discredit the report, it will also not be a surprise. And um, uh, the basic thing will be for all Nigerians, and I'm saying this with every sense of responsibility, all Nigerians to actually be concerned about what the Labour State government will have to say about this report through its white paper and to respond accordingly. Because what's at stake here are our basic liberties as citizens of this country to assemble, to associate, and to freely protest when we have reasons to do so. Uh, citizens of, uh, we, we all deplore those who are risen up in arms against the government and the people of Nigeria. We all deplore the state of insecurity in the country. But at the same time, we affirm our right as citizens to express our displeasure at any time and to, ex uh, to express such through peaceful means, including peaceful protest. Oh, okay. So, so, so if uh, yeah, so if the white paper takes anything away from these basic liberties, which were violently, you know, violated on the night of October 20, 2020, then uh, all Nigerians will have every right to come out in unison. Uh, to express their views about whatever the Labour State government has to say. Okay, uh, let's talk about the constitution of the entire panel. Uh, there are arguments that uh, you can't be a judge in your own case, I mean, a person of interest. So yes, uh, it's, it's, it has to do with the fact that the Lagos State government or the Lagos State governor uh, has been pointed directly, has been involved in all of this, and why should a panel be constituted by, by the Lagos State Government and the report being submitted to the same Lagos State Government? What are your thoughts? Yeah, on that's, that? that's actually part of the contradiction of uh, this colonial legacy. Actually, 
uh, constituting panels, writing white papers, uh, were some of the little tricks of the British uh, when we were under their colonial rule. Uh, it was uh, a method of pacification. It was a method of suppressing popular dissent against uh, ruinous public policies. Uh, so it was perfected by the British. Our post-colonial governments have inherited this culture and they have perpetuated it. So it's grossly unfair. You constitute a, you, uh, an allegation has been made against the government about its conduct, uh, especially at the Lekito Gate, and its conduct generally in responding to the NSAS protest. Because we know that even before the 9th of October 20, uh, government talks have been unleashed on protesters. Uh, so what happened on the night of October 20 was actually a logical culmination of uh, the vicious attack to which uh, protesters, peaceful protesters, were subjected to, were subjected to all over the country, including Lagos. Uh, so you expect that some kind of impartial body made up of civil society and other public institutions uh, we are dedicated over this kind of affair, but we've had a situation where the state government, apparently in response to popular clamor, constituted a panel. And in constituting this panel, they did not consult with anybody. In their wisdom, they picked the members of the panel and uh, swore them in with uh, clear terms of reference. The, part, the panel sat for better part of 12 months, a whole year, receiving testimonies from interest from uh, those who are involved in the case, uh, including the protesters, including the armed personnel that were deployed there, including the representatives of the government itself, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, uh, witnesses were summoned, some came, some, especially from the government side, refused to come. And now, after a whole year of other efforts, we have a report. And the same government is setting up a white, uh, a so called uh, committee again <laughs> to review what was done in a whole year within two weeks. I mean, you see how, uh, how, how does it begin to make sense? So, so what was done in a whole year will now be reviewed within one week by the same government. Mm -hmm. And before even the two weeks will elapse, representatives of the government, including their leading council, are out disparaging the report. So uh, that goes to tell the this sheer illogicality, I don't want to say stupidity, of the whole process. So doesn't it bring, doesn't it bring but us even back then, to... Even then, I haven't yeah. gone this far. I haven't gone this far. There is a report, and we expect that uh, the report will be made available the, uh, on the basis of the report, that government will take very reasonable actions. And what are the demands? Release those who are in prison. As we talk, there are hundreds of Nigerians who are illegally arrested during the protest, after the protest, who are still in jail one year after. They have not been brought to court, even if they were, did anything. The law required that they, they should have their day in court. These people are in prison in their hundreds. They have not been brought to court. They have, they have not been released. We expect that to have closure on this matter, these people will be released. They will be rehabilitated. We expect that those who are killed, their families will be compensated adequately so that there will be closure, there will be justice, and then we can then say we want to move on. But uh, anything short of this, really, uh, will be an affirmation of injustice. Anything and short of this. A, and it will be a call for people to return back to the barricades. So invariably, now you're saying that there might be a counter protest if uh, this um, closure is not actually gotten, because you have indeed said that uh, you are boldly aligning with the recommendations of the panel. And of course, again, you said that uh, the Lagos State government cannot uh, approbate and reprobate, uh, reprobate in his own case. So. 
Exactly. Invariably, now, do you see anything coming out of all of this? Uh, you mentioned that uh, disciplinary actions uh, should be taken to Lieutenant Colonel S. Obella, Major General Godwin Omelo, who refused to honor the summons of the panel in order to frustrate the investigation. Would we see all of these uh, uh, people who were indicted in the, by this particular panel, would you see any of them uh, being brought to, to book, as it were? Well, we will expect that uh, if truly this is a democracy, we we'll expect that these people as public officers, paid with public funds, are uh, ostensibly working on behalf of the public, uh, will be held accountable. We will expect that they will be brought to book for the heinous crime they were alleged to have committed, and they will go and they will be arraigned in court. We are not saying that they should, that we are not having any jungle justice against anybody. But we are saying that they should be removed from their whatever position they are holding right now. And they should be brought to the court of law to answer for their alleged crimes. That is not too much to ask for. Last year, we had the case of George Floyd in the United States of America. Immediately, the police officers concerned were arrested, you know. And they are, they are being caught, and as we speak now, uh, uh, the indicted police officers are in jail. So that's what we expect in a democracy. Uh, even when the soldiers were really us, we had occasions like this when uh, public officers had to be dismissed, uh, even by the military government. So uh, we will expect that the reasonable recommendations of the panel that those who are responsible for the mass murder that Abu in Lekki should be brought to book right. and uh, they show up their day in court. All right. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Benga Akomalafe. He is the co convener uh, coalition for. Uh, Revolution. We must say a very big thank you to you for your input concerning uh, the NSAS report of Lagos State as we await uh, the white paper from the state government. Thank you once again. Thank you thank for joining you very us. Much. All right. All right, still uh, the breakfast and plus TV Africa will take a very quick break and when we'll come back, we will go to a final discussion, which is uh, the attack on passengers on the Kaduna Abuja Highway yesterday. Stay with us.